I'm Natalie. In this video we are going to look at CIS and VAT for subcontractors in Xero. First thing you need to do if you haven't already and you are VAT registered is turn on the new tax rates for domestic reverse charge VAT in Xero. To do that I've done a short video so go and have a look at that video follow the steps and then come back to this video. Once you've turned those on, if you are VAT registered, then we're going to go to accounting. We are going to go to advanced. We are going to go over to the financial settings and we're going to enter in our subcontractor details. So there's a tick box here, which says under the construction industry scheme section, I am a registered subcontractor. So we're going to tick that one. We're going to enter our unique taxpayer reference number into this one. Of course, this is a demo company, so I'm going to enter pretend details. We're going to enter the subcontractor deduction rate. For this, I'm going to choose that I am a standard 20% subcontractor. Once we've entered this, it's very important that before we navigate away, we remember to save those changes. This is cloud-based software, and if we don't hit save, the next screen we go to, those changes won't be reflected. There we go. So that's our 10 digit unique taxpayer reference number entered, our subcontractor deduction rate chosen, and we can see here at the top that it has been saved. So next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna use this breadcrumb trail here at the top to go back to our advanced accounting menu, and we're gonna choose the chart of accounts. Alternatively, you could go through the accounting menu to get to the same place. Once we're in here, we can see by typing in CIS, we can search and see the new, tap, the new chart of account codes that Xero has automatically created for us. So it's created a new sales revenue code and it's entitled it CIS Labour Income. It's also created as a new asset code, CIS asset. And this is where the deductions that are made from any sales invoices we raise for CIS labor income, those deductions will be automatically recorded against this code in our balance sheets in the right place in our accounts. One thing I do want to change here, however, is on the CIS labor income, I want to change the default tax rate. So I'm gonna click on CIS labor income and over here at the bottom where the tax is, I'm going to change this because I want this to always be domestic reverse charge at 20% VAT on income. That's what I want my default to be. Of course, if you're not that registered, you would leave that as no VAT. <coughs> Excuse me. So there we can see we have that now changed. So let's go ahead and see what that looks like in a sales invoice. So I'm going to use our quick add button on the blue banner across the top and I'm going to use the invoice button. So we just enter a sales invoice just as we normally would. You can see here, I this is the new invoicing screen. If you prefer to use the classic invoicing, then the principles are the same. Of course, the screen just looks slightly different. And as we know, we can switch between the two here. So if we start typing in the name of our customer, I'm gonna say the date of this invoice was gonna be the 1st of April. It was due five days later. Here we go. So I'm gonna say that this was CIS labor. I'd say it was £100 for the day's work that I did. And I'm going to change my sales account code here from the standard sales code to that new CIS labour income code that we created. So here we go, CIS labour income. And you'll notice that the tax rate automatically changes to domestic reverse charge at 20% because we changed that default rate within the chart of accounts. So we're never going to forget to make sure we're using the correct VAT rate, which is great. So we can see down here, we've got our net total, we've got our VAT showing correctly as zero, and we've got our total invoice value there of £100. What the CIS features in Zero have also done is they have deducted the 20% that our customer is going to deduct from us, and it's sending it to that CIS asset code that we saw in the chart of accounts, leaving us with the correct amount due on our sales invoice. 
I'm going to go ahead and approve this one now. And then I will show you what the invoice will look like if you're using the standard invoice template. So let's print that PDF. <coughs> we go. So we can see here our demo company, we can see we've got all the standard information we need for a VAT invoice here at the top. And if we scroll down, we can see that that domestic reverse charge VAT rate is clearly shown on the invoice. The wording that we need to be is automatically added to that standard invoice template. And we can see the amount that's due and the amount for the customer to deduct from us is clearly visible there. So everything we need is on that document automatically, which I think is just making our life so much easier. One final thing I wanted to show you is once we paid this invoice off in zero, so I'm gonna mark this as having been paid. Our customer was really nice, they paid us early. They paid us straight into our bank account. There we go, I'm gonna add that payment. So we've marked that sales invoice now as paid. If we go and have a look at our reports, so we're going to go to accounting and then to reports, we now have some new reports available to us in Xero. And these are useful if you're wondering when it comes to submitting your self-assessment tax returns about what CIS you have suffered throughout the year as a subcontractor. If we click this report, we will now be shown very clearly that in the month from the 6th of March to the 5th of April, the amount of CIS suffered is £20, which makes it really clear for us. We can change all sorts on this report. So we can change the date range. We can have it for last CIS month. We can have it for the whole financial year, the previous financial year. You can choose which columns you see. You can group the report depending on what makes it more useful for you. You can filter things out. So if there are things you don't want to see in this report, then they won't appear. And then you click update and the report then comes out according to the parameters you've set. But this is a really great one just to see quickly the CIS suffered in a given date range. You can always save this report into zero. So it'll be there for you to come back to and look at. You can always export it to a PDF as well if you're wanting to uh, attach it to your tax return or send it to your accountant who maybe you haven't given them zero access. It's very useful. So that's it guys. Let me know if there's anything else you want to know about CIS for subcontractors. If there's any questions you have, let us know. Bye.